Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel HNE Life and I'm Dr. Cindy Wong. Today I would like to do part one of a short series about what residency was like for me. <laughs> uh, let's get started. I started as an APCP combined resident and I had started with interest in doing forensic pathology as my career. And well, now that I am at the end of my residency, I end up doing AP only and am doing a fellowship in GI pathology. So things change quite a bit. <laughs> It's kind of like medical school. You might think you are going to go into medicine doing one thing after you experienced it in reality, you decided on doing something else. That's how I've done it. And I feel like this is true in um, my co residents as well. Pathology residency is basically broken into two components, anatomic pathology AP and clinical pathology CP. Within anatomical pathology, there are surgical pathology, autopsy, cytopathology, dermatopathology, medical renal, forensic pathology and neuropathology. So those are the components of anatomical pathology. And the big chunk of that is surgical pathology. In terms of clinical pathology, there is blood bank and transfusion medicine, which is one thing. There's also hematopathology, clinical chemistry, clinical microbiology, immunology slash HLA, coagulation, cytogenetics, and molecular pathology. So my program is an integrated program, which means that we do AP and CP rotations all within the same year. And personally, I prefer it this way. I wanted a program that was integrated instead of the separated program, which I think is now not that common anymore, where you do your first two years in uh, AP and then you do your last two years in CP. And when you do it this way, I feel like it kind of limits you in terms of what you think you want to pursue in pathology. So for example, when you do AP in your first two years, that means by the time you start applying for fellowship, you haven't seen any CP yet. That kind of, I feel like, would bias you towards uh, AP fellowships. At the same time, if you never experienced CP, you probably won't won't know if you enjoy CP or not. So this also kind of limits your exposure to CP before you apply for fellowship. So that's why I personally wanted to go to an APCP integrated program. Uh, even though we are integrated, there's still sort of some division in the sense that our first and third year are AP heavy and our second and fourth year are CP heavy. But that said, we still experience both uh, AP and CP rotations throughout the year for all four years. And personally, I feel like AP and CP are very, very different worlds within pathology. When you think of AP, you think of uh, surgical pathology, you think of histology and slides and making tissue diagnoses. Whereas in CP, most of the work in the clinical labs are done by text. So as the resident, slash as the attending, your job is mostly lab management and you're also in charge of, you know, signing off on final reports. So it's kind of very distinct roles you play in AP and in CP. If someone was an MD, PhD, they might be more drawn to the CP side. But I mean, I, I don't, as you can tell, since I dropped CP, I just have no love for it. So I am very biased towards AP and everything I'm going to say going forward is very biased towards AP. And I'm sorry if you are interested in CP. I'll try my best to represent it fairly given that I did do majority of the CP rotations. The only two I didn't do is uh, microbiology and chemistry. All the other rotations I actually did rotate through and have personal experience in. Given that AP and CP are so different, I feel like most residents, once they're done, inclined to either AP or CP even if they're APCP trained, they will be more towards one side or the other. But in terms of jobs, it's more flexible if you are APCP certified than if you are AP or only CP certified. I would say if you only want to certify in either AP or CP only, you should have a more solid career path in mind. For example, if you know you absolutely love histology and surgical pathology and you love academics and you love say GI, then it's, I would say it's fine. Do an AP only residency and only do a GI fellowship. And then you will just apply for academic GI pathology positions. And nowadays academic positions are very subspecialty 
divided, very few academic settings still do general service sign out. I feel like more people come into residency knowing that they are CP only is because they have a PhD background and they know they only want to do like chemistry or they want to do only microbiology and they come CP and they make their three years more cater towards their interests. At least in my program, CP only curriculum for three years is the first two years. You have a core curriculum where you rotate through all the CP services and your third year is all elective. So you pick what you want to do more of. But if you're not thinking of doing academics and you think you might want to do community or private practice, in that case, it's generally said that you should be APCP combined because most places would, even if they are surgical pathology heavy, they will still want you to have that CP so you can still run several CP departments while your main purpose is to sign out surgical pathology. That's of common practice in small community hospital settings. If you are interested in private practice, you do not have have to do APCP combined. There are jobs out there where you would sign out uh, surgical pathology only in a private practice setting. If you don't know what you want to do, definitely do APCP because that gives you the most flexibility. The other thing, this would be something that you should find out when you're interviewing for residency programs is how flexible a program is with your change in career. So for example, my at my program, they're, they were very flexible with me after doing two years APCP combined and realizing that, oh my, I just, I just, I just can't stand CP, anything in CP, nothing in CP is enjoyable for me. And I feel like my life would be torture if I kept doing CP and have to sit for the CP boards and have to find a job where I have to manage, um, say a clinical chemistry lab. I, I just don't want that job. So I decided halfway through my residency to switch to AP only. And my program was very supportive and they were very much fine with me doing that. But I don't think every program is that lenient. And if you feel like that is something that's very important to you, make sure you ask on your interview and pick a program that best suits what you're thinking of a career path for yourself. With that all out of the way, let's start with all my experiences in all the different rotations I've done. Oh, actually, right before that, I do want to say something about step three. As a pathology resident, you still have to take step three. I would suggest that you take that test as soon as you can, because once you start pathology residency, it's just a whole different way of thought. You will never think about that. How do I take care of a patient again? All that knowledge you've gathered in your third and fourth years just like slip away very fast, like very, very fast. I know that there has been residents who took step three three before they started residency because technically you could sit for step three uh, once you've graduated in med school. So between May and July, some people will sit for step three. Me and most people in my program take step three in the fall of first year. And honestly, it's not that stressful because no one cares about step three scores. They only care that you pass it. Most of us basically study for a month. And I think most of us find that um, it's not the multiple choice question that's the hardest. It's this portion where you do the virtual patients and how to manage them, that is the hardest. So back to my residency and how I felt. When you first start, the attendings are very understanding and they understand that you don't know everything. In the first year, it is the expectation, at least for us, was that you could look at something and you can tell if it's normal or you think it's malignant. Even that was really stressful because um, as a resident, not only do I have to learn how to grow, I had to learn how to use uh, the co-path system. I had to learn how different rotations have different expectations and how different attendings have different like ways of doing things. So you have to like change the way you do things every time you change attendings and start learning what different pathology is within each normal organ system. So it was a lot. It was a very steep learning curve. And you could say that for a lot of residency programs, but I feel like in pathology, that that learning curve is just quite steep and it's very hard too because there is sort of a graduated expectations but as a first year resident and as a fourth year resident we get basically the same amount of work and then we're expected to do the same amount of work the only difference is that as a first year you're not expected to know all the answers whereas in fourth year you're expected to make a diagnosis or at least come up with a very 
good differential, think of the things you want to order and be able to write a good sounding report. As a first year, when you're getting used to everything and you don't really know what you're doing, it's just slow. Everything is slower. Whereas as a fourth year, you get the same amount of work everything just goes a little faster because you know how everything's done. You've had four years of practice and you're just better at it. But that said, residency does get easier as you go on. First year is very tough. And then second year, it gets better. Third year gets a little better. And fourth year, it gets a little better in terms of your work hours. But I would say in terms of expectations, that that for sure is inclined. Like making mistakes in your first year is like expected. Whereas as a fourth year, if you make a very dumb mistake or you know you can't come up with some very simple diagnoses it's looked very bad upon you because the expectation is you should be able to function kind of like a junior attending in that sense because it, it is possible after four year residency long as you pass that board you don't even have to do a fellowship you could start practicing and there are people who do that okay so in terms of books i would recommend especially in first year is the Malavi's book, Practice of Surgical Pathology. It is a great introductory book. It um, is very short. I wouldn't even call it a textbook. It's more of a guidebook. And it's something that I think is a very useful resource if you are a fourth year medical student trying to impress on your fourth year pathology rotations. And it's also a very good book to help you start off in your first year of pathology residency. And a very good online resource is Expert Path. It is basically the up to date of pathology. In Expert Path, it's like online database. Um, you'll basically type in whatever you're looking and searching, and then they'll give you a bunch of search results and you just click on the one you're interested in. Everything is in bullet format and it divides everything really nicely. It really hits the key points of everything. As a first year, instead of buying one of those thick reference books, um, is to have something like this. All right, I think this is a good place to stop for today. And um, I will continue with the rest of my residency experience in the next coming videos. Uh, I hope you really liked this and this was educational. And if you do and you want to support me and my channel, please like and subscribe. And I'll see everyone next time. Bye.